The following is a presentation of TFNN. With your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, squeezably soft host. As always, we like to come to you this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. And 3 p.m. Well, as we uh, left the show yesterday, we told you about the options rollover. That generally is a pattern where if you have the Monday after options expiration down, then Tuesday's up. If Monday's up, then Tuesday's down. And then you get into Wednesday where you actually start seeing uh, the, uh, um, the true nature of the market start to roll out. Uh, my guess is that we'll probably pull back a little bit off the levels that we have today on very light volume. And, of course, uh, the old chestnut, don't be short a quiet market. If you're short something that's got a, a lot of, uh, of uh, short interest in it, do not be surprised to see if it holds up or even goes higher. And you can have some pretty wicked um, short squeezes into the end of the day. Uh, at the top of the hour, Tommy O'Brien talked about Tesla uh, and the uh, supposed buyout that everybody's talking about. Uh, just because someone had talks at something uh, doesn't mean a whole lot. And again, um, one of the reasons why that most of these articles, uh, most of these things tend to be uh, rather dubious at best, is the motives of the people uh, that are talking about buying. Because most of the time they'll go, yeah, yeah, we're really interested. We're really interested. Um, man, it looks like you're making lots of money. We'd like to buy you. We need to kind of a quick, book, uh, uh, quick peek at your books. And then suddenly they're not very interested in buying anymore. And that's generally what happens if you get to a, a chance to look under the cover of a lot of these big corporations is just how cooked are the books. And for the very beginning, um, Tesla had a lot, a lot of free money. They didn't have to make a profit because guess what? The government was going to throw all kinds of cash at them uh, along with many other solar frauds and, and other green frauds. Um, most of those were big political kickback op, uh, operations, and most of them went br uh, uh, broke in a number of years, maybe two years, like Solyndra. There were a handful of others, probably seven or eight major frauds, uh, but uh, yeah, mostly because we didn't have a uh, justice uh, department that was much interested in looking in. Uh, to its boss, those things kind of went under the covers. Um, Tesla kind of like the last man standing in all, the, all those solar frauds. There's a couple of solar cell companies uh, doing stuff. Um, of course, Tesla, uh, to cover up the fact that it had one of its solar frauds, uh, ended up buying the company. Uh, it does almost nothing now a couple years after the buyout. Um, there's a couple of them left. Uh, the factory that Tesla bought in Solar City in New York City almost is uh, is totally rented out uh, to yet another company. So the only reason that it builds any solar cells there at all is because another company is making solar cells there. Uh, but uh, yeah, as George Shore says, uh, all of financial history is one deceit and lie after another. Your desire, your uh, job as a speculator is to get on when uh, when it's being perpetrated and off before it's discovered. And, uh, well, it doesn't matter how far you go down. You're going to find at least, uh, well, we got down to 196 on Tesla today. It's uh, trading at 206 right now. Uh, I'm not going to be surprised if this thing gets back up to 250, 260 uh, for a little while. There's going to be a lot of talk about uh, sales in China. And my guess, though, is eventually um, there's uh, hey, going to China and manufacturing there 
is kind of like uh, getting involved uh, with the mob. Once you do, you're totally and always screwed permanently because you never can leave. Um, I certainly wouldn't go there if I, I was Elon Tusk. Um, you never know when you can leave the country. Uh, other things going on in the market uh, today, uh, uh, just basically the bounce. But again, I don't put a lot of weight in yesterday's action. I don't put a lot to, uh, in to today's action. And the reason why is options expiration is a huge part of what the, how the market makes money. Along with IPOs, they have a huge organic effect. They are not uh, just things that eventually come by. There's some stuff that's always coming by. Um, I think even though that we've got some headline numbers out there, I think some cancellation in some IPOs also helped a little bit today. Um, we'll see what actually happens in the next day or so. But it uh, looks like a lot of people are saying, hey, maybe it's a good time to delay our IPOs. And I think that probably, I mean, we just had a lot of IPOs suck out just the very tertiary money that we had available. So we've got a few things going on. Of course, uh, tomorrow, uh, really the last day of full trading for this week, uh, Thursday by noon, we should see most of the uh, big shots on Wall Street. Uh, adios, uh, Scaramouche, do you do the Fandango all the way up to the Hamptons? This is the big time to impress all your neighbors by saying you're going to the Hamptons. Uh, and of course, uh, the biggest business going on right now, helicopter flights up there to avoid the six hour traffic jam it's normally, what, an hour, hour and a half drive? But that's about it. Um, yep. Uh, oh, note in the den about the Monday down, Tuesday up thing. Again, you're not probably going to get rich and retire on that. But I think you'll learn not to short uh, by the end of the day on Monday. Uh, only get clobbered on Tuesday. And again, go long on Monday. Uh, because the market's moving up only to get uh, reversed on Tuesday. It's normally by that Wednesday, uh, about noon, that you start seeing much. And again, on this part, it's nothing but uh, a lot of people that are going to be pulling back a bit uh, for on light volume. Um, for my short-term newsletter, I've got a couple of positions, and those positions are based on stocks that have uh, – 15, 20 days to cover. That means that there's so many shorts in these stocks. And on the last 30 days of average volume, uh, if the shorts wanted to get out, if there was some kind of good news, real or imagined, fake or true, it would take them 20 days just to get out on the average volume. Uh, if you can find some stocks that have bought them and move them and get them to start moving higher now, it is very hard not to see some shorts want to run for the hills. And as soon as you get a few in a stock that has that many short, then you get a stampede. Stampede, folks. That's what I'm betting on before the end of the weekend. We'll talk about this more as I return. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, 
the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Anyway, uh, I've got a couple of positions in the short-term daily newsletter that are, well, not too bad. I mean, that's setting the world on fire. One's up about 2.2%. The other one's up about 2.8% on the day. So, but eh, they're moving certainly in the right direction. And again, you get, uh, it's kind of like a snowball. A lot of times starts off small and uh, doesn't always work. But generally when you've got so many people short and a stock doesn't go down any farther, um, generally you get the opposite direction. And sometimes you can get, uh, a really big snowball by the time it comes down the end of the hill. Other than that, there's not a lot of times when you have a advantage uh, going into a, a market that goes light volume like it's going to this week. And uh, the only way I've ever been able to find consistent money is betting on those shorts covering before the end of the week if the market just kind of even just stands still. Uh, I think we might get a little bit of a pullback. And I would certainly like that uh, to buy more long positions going into next week when we come back on Tuesday. Uh, okay, what else do we have? Uh, Tesla warns of coming battery mental shortage. Uh, okay. Doesn't seem like that's anytime soon. If you look at uh, the uh, way that the uh, lithium stocks like SQM and those things are trading, uh, not all that good. Um, let's get a little history out of the way. We'll look at that chart. We'll do a few more things. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. And what do we have going on today? On uh, 19... On this day in 1924, 14-year-old Bobby Franks is abducted from Chicago, Illinois, uh, and killed in what later proves to be one of the most fascinating murders in American history. The killers, Nathan Leopold and Richard Loeb, were extremely wealthy and intelligent teenagers whose sole motive for killing Franks was to desire to commit the perfect crime. Blood chilling, and uh, of course, um, you had a very famous... Uh, attorney uh, of the time, very much uh, like the OJ trial, when everybody knew they did it. <laughs> uh, 
Um, in the case of OJ, just people thinking that they wanted to get back at the man uh, for perceived injustices of the past. On this case, you had a famous, or now pretty famous lawyer, uh, basically spending the entire trial for these uh, young boys that killed this other even younger boy um, just to get them off of the uh, death penalty because it was almost uh, a sure thing that both of these uh, young guys that killed this other guy, um, a lot of auditory uh, got them saved the death penalty. Um, but uh, by 1936, one had died in prison uh, going on with uh, razor blade fights. Oh, can think of just how great fun that is in prison. Uh, the other one got out in 1958 and uh, spent the rest of his life because his parents were filthy rich Chicagoans uh, living in uh, obscurity on the beaches of Puerto Rico uh, and died in 1972. But we all think that uh, people only do cruel and nasty things today, mostly because we don't spend any time with our past. We think uh, and look through rose-colored glasses at uh, the way people work and do things. But uh, just as blood-chilling as it is today in 1924. Okay, uh, wanted to talk about something, and now I've forgotten about it. I said we'd look at a chart about it. Anybody remember what I said before the break? Eh, we'll think about it here for a while. I think I'll be able to figure it out. Um, got a question in the den. Uh, as you see it, is there sufficient shorting and put bind to provide a short squeeze uh, fuel coming uh, into th uh, the three week into quad witching on June 21st. It just isn't ever, in, unless it's massive, uh, which I don't see now, it's just not that good this far out. Um, using options, kind of like telling the weather. And that is that at best, you probably only want to go 10 days out. And, you know, there's been a couple of months, probably in the last five years, that it was radically apparent uh, that everybody was betting on the market to go higher or lower. But those are rare events for the most time, uh, most part, um, option market makers are fairly level-headed. They don't see a blowout in the Super Bowl uh, every month. And, you know, maybe you get something so lopsided. Uh, that there's uh, that there's a lot of points on a football game, but they're still betting on that team to win, aren't they? You may have to give 20 points to a team, but they're still going to bet that that's going to win. And generally, that's probably going to exactly what's happened. So I don't see that much happening. I just think that we had kind of a market that was uh, had a lot of uh, froth in it. We have that froth taken off. I think a lot of people are beating the drums and were yesterday especially beating the drums of uh, the trade deal. But the problem is, who doesn't know that it's going to be a problem now? You may have uh, been uh, whistling past the graveyard for the last year on this trade deal, but it's now in. No one thinks now that it's going to be settled in a minute or an hour or a day or a week or a month. Uh, but I've been saying that before. I'd said that it's probably going to take a year, but no. Would they listen to me on Wall Street? No. Nay, I say. I say nay. I'm from the people that say nay. Anyway, uh, as we start looking at the market itself, uh, now that we've had that off, it's not like it's going to generally, it, on, the, on the upside, it takes a lot of time for people to put the cash in uh, for things that are getting better. But man, do people leave like rats leaving a ship. I'm suspecting that by the end of Friday, uh, the, the market will have adjusted. I also think that in the coming weeks, what we're going to see is a market that probably has a lot more movement in individual stocks than in the uh, actual indexes itself. And uh, I have no index positions at this time, nor am I thinking of a lot of putting them in. I like 
um, positions that can far outpace uh, the market, uh, if I am correct. Not that I am correct, but if I am correct. Uh, anyway, we're going to the break here. Give me a call at 877-927-6648. You can email me at path at tfnn.com. And, of course, you can always put a message in the den like John did from Philadelphia. I'll be glad to answer it. We'll look at some charts after this. But, again, I think we've kind of seen some highs in these FANG stocks. And we're looking for sector rotation coming into June. We'll be back in a minute. Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Com now. The TFNN Memorial Day Tiger Dollar Sale is here. From now through Memorial Day, you can get up to a 40% bonus on your Tiger Dollar purchase. Tiger Dollars never expire and can be used for any TFNN good or service. Whether you're a current subscriber looking to add instant savings or you're a new listener or viewer that is considering signing up for any product in the near future, now is a great time to get your Tiger Dollars and lock in dramatic savings on all TFNN products and services. We only have a sale like this a couple times a year, so don't let it pass you by. Tiger Dollars are are available in three purchase options with a 20%, 30%, and even 40% bonus. Once you purchase your Tiger Dollars, you'll be able to apply them to your TFNN account, and then they are automatically used for all your recurring subscriptions going forward, making it as easy as possible. For all the details on this Tiger Dollar promotion running through Memorial Day, visit the front page of TFNN.com and get your Tiger Dollars before this sale passes you by. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts has a special running for one week only. From now through Memorial Day, you can save 25% off your first month and we'll ship you a hardcover copy of Tom O'Brien's best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade. The Art of Timing the Trade, your ultimate trading mastery system. This software package is the fastest, easiest, and most accurate way to analyze stocks using Tom O'Brien's trading philosophy. It automatically provides you with Gartley and butterfly patterns, swing points, retracement levels, confluence areas, expansion targets, and the power law vector indicator with just the click of a mouse. The scanner searches thousands of stocks each day and delivers a list of every Gartley and Butterfly pattern it finds automatically. Just enter the promo code BOOK at checkout. This sale ends Memorial Day, May 27th, so don't let it pass you by. For all the details and to save 25% and get your free book shipped today, check out the art of timing the trade charts on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, and um, healthcare. So we'll get to, we'll do the uh, rare earth to begin with. Uh, question in the den is, can you give your thoughts on trading rare earth minerals outside of China? First of all, rare earth minerals are not rare. What they are is very low concentrations, but everywhere all over the earth. When you get 2 or 3 or 4% concentrations, generally that's where it's economical to trade. In the past, there was a huge boom bust 
Uh, one was MCP, which I kind of got on uh, back when I first started the show. What was it, about 20? Um, huh, what is that? Are we on? Everybody can hear me in the din? I'm hearing some kind of beeping. Okay, I will go on. Okay, the um, thing that we're looking at uh, is uh, the ETFs in that sector. Uh, I was asked about this rare earth mineral ETF which is, uh, what is it, R-E-M-X. Uh, the problem is uh, that it's all about mining and getting high concentrations. Um, now, China had made a deal uh, where they were trying to uh, bankrupt uh, rare earth mineral providers around the, United, uh, around the world uh, in the late part, about 2008 or 2009, Actually, it actually started back in 2005 or in 2004. Uh, at that time, they thought that they could uh, corner the market on rare earth phosphors for television tubes. And strangely enough, everybody went another way uh, when they couldn't get those phosphors and started making LCD screens. And one of the reasons why we had such rapid adoption of uh, LCD screens from about 2004 and five, they raised the uh, the uh, rates on those phosphors uh, that were only uh, mined in one giant pit in Mongolia uh, through the roof, and everybody just said, "Hey, we're going to go another way," and uh, went into uh, flat screen televisions. We had a massive change in the market because of China trying to. Uh, corner of the market on phosphors. They tried the exact same thing again in 2008 or 9. And what our government did was put a whole bunch of money behind MCP. Uh, and uh, uh, what was that? I think it's out there in Nevada, uh, where there was an existing mine that had closed uh, because, of, uh, because of ecological reasons, partly. Uh, two, the uh, people in California didn't like any kind of mining whatsoever, real or imagined. Uh, and did everything they could to kill it. The government all hopped in. Uh, it was going to the moon. And as soon as China quit trying to corner the market, uh, the prices fell and MCP went bankrupt. Um, a real teachable moment at the time because uh, I got into it. I forget what it was. I think it was like 15 bucks or something. The thing rocketed up. Uh, I got it at like 47 bucks or something. And this was like in the space of a few months, so it wasn't too bad. Anyway, I got out kind of early uh, because I got really nervous when I saw the CEO on CNBC on almost a daily basis. Um, when you see somebody on two, three times a week on CNBC, should be a huge heads up that there's something going on. Anyway, I think the thing went to like 79 bucks from memory. And then uh, that's when... Uh, China decided that they weren't going to uh, allow anybody act, uh, uh, out uh, uh, else out there to actually hit the price of uh, rare earth minerals, uh, mostly neobindium, which is a uh, metal needed for making very high uh, concentration uh, magnets, which is still a big thing now for both the motors uh, and literally everything else you have. The United States actually keeps a stockpile of that in case we got into war with China, because guess what? It all comes from those giant pits in Mongolia all over again. So it is a, we do have plenty of rare earth minerals here in the United States. The desire to mine them, eh, not so much, uh, not my backyard, uh, as they say, NIMBY, which is uh, generally a big way of putting it in. Now. Uh, a very long explanation back to what I think about uh, rare earth minerals uh, and this. Um, I'm showing this webpage, which is 
the ETFDB.com. If you want to see actually what's in an ETF, uh, the thing to do is go and look at this one uh, because it will show you everything that's in it down at the bottom. It'll show you the 21 holdings and the percentages of those holdings and it, uh, a great resource. Uh, if you miss this or can't write it down, just email me at path at tfnn.com and I'll be able to send you the link. But any ETF in there, until you get to like one in a million parts or something, and there are ETFs that have things like they must own like five shares of some company. Um, I don't think that they get down to that much, but uh, you can see how much uh, is of each company, and especially if you're watching the Dow or the NASDAQ, or you see one stock get blown apart in the morning, and you're trying to figure out how it's going to affect the ETF you have in there, you can go and take a look at that page. Uh, yeah, rare earth minerals are not so rare. The processing is as toxic as gold or silver or any of the other heavy metals that you get out of them, and that is what's problematic. Uh, anyway, uh, the whole thing in MCP blew up. And the reason why is if they turn the spigot on, there's a lot of places you can get it. Uh, one of the other things that really happened was Australia saw the, the uh, problems with China. And that's why you really haven't heard about uh, anything other than lithium, which is going to be needed in massive uh, values if uh, electric cars continue to work on batteries. I'm kind of thinking that. Uh, the fuel cell uh, way is probably the way that the majority of countries are going to go, mostly after seeing Germany and uh, Japan, South Korea. A lot of these countries have decided uh, that actually manufacture cars, that they are really heavily lay, uh, uh, um, on the road to fuel cells instead of uh, batteries, mostly for the reasons I've discussed on here, which is you got a car for eight years, eight years, you have to replace $25,000 worth of batteries, kind of a time bomb, kind of like buying a car with a uh, balloon payment at the end uh, that's going to kill you. And that's the downside to buying electric cars. If you're going to drive the living wheels off of it for eight years, probably not a bad deal. The batteries do tend to do fairly well. But at the end, in eight years, you're going to have uh, about half the range that you started with if you're lucky. If you're not, maybe in five years, then the warranties have dropped to almost nothing. Anyway, uh, that's uh, about it. I'm looking for and listening for audio. I don't hear the music yet. There we go. We'll be back in a minute. Talk to if you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. What would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back. Uh, and anyway, I was talking about this website. Um, you can certainly email me if you forget the name of it. But it's uh, etf.db.com, and it shows you the percentage uh, in that ETF of what's going on. The problem I have with getting involved in these is you have two issues. One, the supply and the demand for different uh, rare earth minerals. And two, uh, the, the most of these are in some foreign country, and they're spread out all over the world from Chile to Australia uh, to China to everything else. And it's such a mishmash that I don't know if you can get the kind of leverage that I would want to see in these, although they have popped up here recently in the last few days. I think that's more on the trade tensions and maybe some uh, threats from China that maybe they'll uh, want to uh, majigger uh, some of those rare earths. But again, um, if they quit shipping uh, less, then probably Australia is just going to start shipping more. Uh, lithium, the big one right now, is, of course, all from Chile. Uh, oh, that's what I was going to look at earlier uh, when we were talking about that. I could not remember that, and that was SQM, uh, which is um, the um, uh, lithium mines in uh, Chile. And like I said, these things have done nothing but go down. Uh, which makes me think that certainly the demand for electric cars has probably come down. And one of the reasons why um, Tesla was getting hit fairly hard. Uh, the question is just when will uh, Tesla's factory in China start opening up? Uh, and, you know, you got kind of some kind of little bottom around here around 195 and the pop back higher. Uh, but yeah, you, could you get back up into this area 240 or 250? Um, well, we're back close to the areas of about 240 or 250 bucks. So, yeah, I, that is the problem. Um, we were brought up in the, we were talking in the den here. And, you know, you got Biden's son uh, who gets like a billion dollars or something from China. You got Barbara Boxer's uh, husband who gets like, I don't know, 15 million a year for something that no one can ever explain to me what he does over there in China. And then, of course, Elaine Chow, which is McConnell's wife. Um, they, I mean, everybody in politics is always getting paid off um, on both sides of the aisle. I won't make this sound like it is a partisan issue because uh, equal parts. Uh, you wouldn't think you Mr. Smith didn't go to Washington and get uh, rich, but I think everybody else has. Uh, and. Uh, so you always have to look at that. But uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on in China pushing probably a lot of buttons in this trade war. Um, probably a lot tougher for us to do that because, of course, anybody cooperating with us would be taken out and shot in the, uh, in the uh, rice paddies out there in China. Um, but uh, you never know. Anyway, uh, as we were talking about rare earths, um, they popped up real big, but a lot of times these can just be... Um, fairly benign things, and you've got so many different uh, levers being pulled, it's very tough uh, to catch those. And 
there is generally right now a fairly quick response for other areas of the world that can produce these to come online and get those prices back down once they hit a price. Uh, as our friends uh, that have gone before me at uh, TFNN have always said, the best cure for a high price is a high price. Um, yep, the Camera Rouge and, uh, of course, Mr. Mao, who uh, he may have killed up to 100 million people. All I know is that everywhere that communism goes, uh, death and destruction, uh, including socialism, follow like the plague, the virtual black plague. Uh, okay, so do we, does that answer all the questions out here? I, when it was, it was a lot easier back in whatever it was, 2010, when I was started. And I remember that I think it was like May 5th or May 10th, because I started the show and I think I spent two episodes on just those uh, on MCP saying uh, how that was all going to play out. And uh, yeah, as soon as they got uh, moving, China decided it was time to uh, give up uh, trying to corner the market on it. And it went bankrupt in like a year, went to the top and the bottom. It's pretty quick, I remember. Um, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. As I said before, um, what I'm thinking is happening or what I think we're looking at happening uh, is a big change from a lot of multinationals uh, to more U.S.-centered uh, corporations going forward. I think since these corporations like Microsoft have so much weight in the indexes that we could see an index that goes sideways for a while, but individual stocks far outperforming the indexes. And that's what I'm kind of looking at as I go into next week. I'm looking at sectors that have gone up in the past, pulled back, and look like they could be the winners uh, along a uh, protracted trade war uh, with China. And again, if you're building a lot of things here in the United States uh, and you've been buying stuff from China, you're going to probably try to look a little closer to home or in countries where it is much more palatable for Americans to think that they will have some kind of straight deal uh, instead of a raw deal uh, that they will get going forward if they continue cooperating with China. So Australia, uh, probably long-term uh, more stuff coming from them in raw uh, materials, uh, but uh, there's a couple of others people have asked me. Um, one of the big things that China actually sends here to the United States that a lot of people don't think about is plywood. Um, that used to come from Canada. And with any of these tariffs, uh, and if they get tougher, I could see China, I could see Canada being a big supplier uh, of uh, wood to the United States in the form of plywood. A lot of the sticks, the two by fours, all that kind of stuff, actually comes from Canada already. Uh, it's the plywood where China has really done well because they don't have any environmental regulations. So they can use whatever kind of toxic chemicals, run off from their uh, nuclear power plants, whatever they need to put in that plywood. Uh, kind of like what they were putting in those floorboards for, uh, what was that company that did the uh, uh, flooring? It was the national company. We find out that they were dumping all kinds of top, uh, toxic chemicals in them. Uh, but that's, uh, yeah, formaldehydes. Yeah, that's it right there. That's what I was thinking of. Lumber liquidators, that's what it was. Uh, and that could be a big um, pop for uh, companies in, like Warehouser, some of those other ones that are already doing it. So you might look at that. Uh, but um, of the stuff that, Home Depot and Lowe's uh, get from China. It, it, I remember the Home Depot guy saying that that may, the plywood may have been the most money they spend on anything from China. So, just a thought. Uh, we'll wrap this up in a few minutes. Still have plenty of time to give me a call.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're back. Um, we were looking at Microsoft out here. Like I said, uh, a lot of these things look like they're kind of topping out. Microsoft's probably still going to be the best of them. But I think, you know, especially with a lot of uh, products coming uh, from China, from Amazon, you've seen, eh, I wouldn't say huge weakness, but some weakness. Um, to me, uh, a loss of products or the height in products uh, may actually uh, be one of the issues with Amazon. It has a massive amount of stuff that come from China. Um, I'm thinking that could probably come back to 1800. And again, you're probably going to see wider moves out there from other areas. Um, one of the things that kind of caught my eye in the last few days has been uh, the IYT and the transports. Um, and you've got kind of a bounce off this low of 184.19 on May 13th back up here. But again, um, if you're bringing everything in on container ships, uh, solves a lot of tra uh, transportation issues. I suspect you're going to continue to see uh, transportation a much bigger factor here in the United States going forward, uh, not because there's that much more, but because it's different. And if we don't have a bunch of container ships showing up at the port of uh, L.A., Long Beach, uh, and the one which is they added, which I want to say is in, is it in Seattle? Is in Portland, not Portland. Uh, it's up 
in Washington somewhere. They added just to make sure they had the capability. Um, you know, you might see a lot more stuff moving uh, not at the same kind of scale. And that may be good for a lot of those transportation companies uh, because if uh, you're not a big manufacturer and you got a thousand uh, carts, maybe you can charge a little bit more money. So more train business, maybe. Anyway, going to be a lot of uh, ways to play this going forward as the trade wars drag on. Uh, but uh, I think uh, a lot of ways probably going to some companies will make more, some will make less. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat channel.